Thank you so much to Tails.com for sponsoring today's video and providing my dog with some tasty food. More on them in a little bit. There we go. Gideon is such like an unserious protagonist that she's just kind of like, well, you're hot, so I'm gonna do exactly what you say. What the actual, like, is going on? Hey besties, it's Joel, and today I'm gonna be reading a series that basically will kill me and then resurrect me from the dead once again, or, you know, become a necromancer. And so for today, I'm gonna be reading the Locked Tomb series by Tamsin Muir. You have no idea the amount of, like, comments, the amount of DMs, the amount of pressure some of my friends have been giving me and a lot of you as well about me reading this series. Every time I ask everyone like what series I should read in 2023, everyone really recommends the Lock Tomb series. I don't know if it's because people really want me to read it or they just want to see my reactions to it. I have no idea. Maybe it's both, but I'm just really excited to be finally reading this series and showing you all of my experiences today. But first of all, I hope you're all doing very well and that you're looking after yourselves. If you've yet to grab that drink of water, please do so we must remain well and hydrated i had a cup of water earlier so i'm having some lovely chai and if you've yet to check out my instagram nor my twitter i would highly recommend you go do that as well because i post some extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. Okay, so the Locked Tomb series by Tamsin Muir is consisted of four books, but only three of them have been released so far. And so the first one is Gideon the Ninth, which is then followed by Harrow the Ninth, which is then followed by the novel that wasn't originally planned, but then came out, No the Ninth. And so I am really excited to be reading all three of these. I have the Illumicrate exclusive editions of them that they did. And just the lo look, it it's just it's so gorgeous and i love the way that they've done these they also come with like a reversible dust jacket that each of the books looks so good naked like the jacket art was done by tommy arnold and i think tommy arnold's like illustrative style is one of my favorites i just love the way the covers look these are also some of my favorite naked covers like absolutely in love with the way that these look but like i mentioned earlier there are just so many people that are in love with this series i mean there's lesbian necromancers there's a lot of like funny memes and references people are saying and there was just so much love and adoration for this series that I'm really excited to join the locked tomb fandom become a reanimated corpse maybe become a necromancer myself who knows but I just think it's gonna be a lot of fun to discover the world discover the like intrigue and discover why people love this series so much and my friends Cersei and Joelle are just like utterly obsessed with this series and so I think it's gonna be pretty intriguing to see my own journey and for them to also watch my journey. So what is like Gideon the Ninth about? Because well I'll only give you the synopsis for the first book. Well, the Emperor needs necromancers and the Ninth Necromancer needs a swordsman and so Gideon has a sword, some dirty magazines, and basically no time for anyone's undead bullshit. Brought up by unfriendly, ossifying nuns, ancient retainers, and countless skeletons, Gideon is ready to abandon a life of servitude and an afterlife as a reanimated corpse. She packs up her sword, her shoes, her dirty magazines, and prepares to launch a daring escape. But her childhood nemesis won't set her free without her service. Harahark Nona Jesimus, which I'm gonna come to later, but like, Nona? No, no, no. Nona, reverend daughter of the ninth house and bone witch extraordinaire, has been summoned into action. The emperor has invited the heirs to each of his loyal houses to a deadly trial of wits and skill. If Harahak succeeds, she will become an immortal, the all-powerful servant of the resurrection. But no necromancer can succeed without their cavalier. And so without Gideon's sword, Harrow will fail and ninth house will die. But of course, some things are better off dead. And so just from that synopsis, I have like three things. First thing, Ninth House. We'll, we'll be reading that eventually. Second thing, Harrow Hog, Nona, Jasmus. Nona, no, Nona. I sense a relation there. We'll theorize later about that, but we shall see. Third thing, I am so excited to get into this series. Like just from that synopsis alone, I think like the, the book is just gonna offer so much like fascination, intrigue, comedy, laughter, and just have this really good blend of such awesomeness. And so I'm gonna get to read Gideon the Ninth and I'll be back in a little bit and give you my whole thoughts and feelings and share with you every single undead thought that I have. And so yeah, 
I'll see you in a bit, besties. But before we get into reading Gideon the Ninth and the rest of the Locked Tomb series, I have to take Merlin on a dog walk. And Merlin is literally such an active and chaotic dog. And after each walk, he's in the mood to basically devour a big bowl of food. In this case, my partner and I have been using Tails.com for the past couple of months, who have also very kindly sponsored today's video. So Tails.com is a science led brand that tailors its dog food to each dog's individual needs, with each of the recipes allowing for variety in their diets. The service is super easy to use and the food is really quick to prepare and Merlin can be quite the picky eater sometimes so if there's anything he's not particularly fond of you can let Tails.com know and they'll focus on providing the meals you know your dog will love. Plus the handy subscription format ensures we never run out of dog food like this morning where you can see we were almost out of dry food and they just sent our next box right here which is filled with handy information and all his delicious food packed really nicely. And so if you have a dog breast friend you can check out Tails.com by using the link in the description down below. With my plans to branch out into different avenues of content in 2023, I'll be able to start working with many more brands that I love to use such as Tails.com and so the support from everyone for these kinds of sponsors really means a lot. And so now that Merlin has been fed, we can now get back to the reading. I don't know how to process what just happened. Okay, so this currently doesn't seem right. So... <sighs> there we go. Hello, besties. I have finished... Gideon the Knife by Tamsin Muir, and what the actual fuck was this book? <laughs> like, I loved it. I think this is kind of the essence of a perfect combination between like modern pop culture and a science fantasy novel because this book really hits the head on the comedic aspects and how to make like a serious novel that's trying to make a commentary on certain things come across like really comedic and funny at the same time because Gideon is such like an unserious protagonist. Like she really just wants to like escape and get out and really just keeps getting put into these situations that she's just kind of like, well, you're hot. So I'm going to do exactly what you say but then when things inevitably go to shit obviously I'm gonna blame myself because you know I was the one that got myself into this situation and I just found Gideon just to be such a funny protagonist because of the way that she navigated this like various situations and the deception that she tried to do even though it wasn't really a deception it was just her trying to make sure that nothing went wrong but then everything went wrong. Harrow in and of herself is also such a funny protagonist like the way that she just so like serious about things in the beginning but then as her and Gideon begin to like trust each other and kind of fall into this kind of friendship not friendship she really begins to like come out of a shell a bit and we really get to see another side of Harrow that we didn't really see in the beginning and I absolutely loved that the other characters within the story as well such as like Camilla, Corona, Yanthe they're always up to no good I think the way that everything was presented was done in such like a good way and the world building was built up very gradually so that 
but I didn't feel like lost within the world. There were times where I was a bit like, I need to wrap my head around this. But that happens with a lot of like science fiction fantasy series that you read. Like you do need a bit of time to just get used to the world. And I really fell in love with the characters and their personalities and the little pop culture references. Like when Gideon at one point refers to Harrow as a Twilight princess. And I was like, I can definitely see Harrow as a kind of Midna kind of character. And that just makes me laugh because that makes Gideon link. But then we get to like the middle and the ending of this book. And as things get even more chaotic and weirder, my brain just like starts churning with theories. And I definitely do have like two key theories about this series so far. But I, I think like the ending of this book, I knew it was going to happen. However, I just didn't think it would hurt as much as it did. I just hope there's some way for like Gideon and Harrow to like solve this kind of situation. Because as we are already aware with this series, the end is never truly the end until it is the end. And yeah, essentially like I'm just really in love with this series so far. This was definitely a really good introduction to this world and I'm really excited to see how it's going to continue now in Harrow the Ninth. I feel like Harrow's book is going to be quite interesting because I did take a quick peek into like the beginning of this book. I really was a bit taken aback by the prologue which said the night before the Emperor's murder. So I feel like introducing the book this way is going to be quite interesting. There is some stuff that's going to happen that is going to turn the entire like world as we know it upside down and I'm really excited to see like how Harrow, Gideon and the rest of everyone are gonna really crack this. Dulcinea Septimus was definitely one of the most interesting characters in this book and I really fell in love with the way that Tamsin had like written her throughout the book and like there was just something about her, there was something more to her. I even wrote in like my notion notes, I was like predicting what actually happened and I was so thrilled when it actually came to light. I'm just really happy that like we got to meet a full cast of characters and then watch some of them die. And then also to highlight some of my other favorite characters, Palamedes from the sixth house. I really enjoyed him. He's such like a smart cookie. The way that he just conducted himself. I feel like if you took Palamedes, Gio from the Sunbearer Trials and Nico Angelo from the Percy Jackson series and put them all in a room, they would get along really well. But for now, I need to get reading Harrow the Ninth because I literally need to find out what happens next because I'm literally on the edge of my seat needing to know exactly what is up in the house of the undying. I am literally just gonna sit here and probably read for like an hour or two. And yeah, so until I finish it, I shall see you in a bit besties. What is going on? Hello everyone. The setup is a little bit different at the minute and that's because I'm currently on a writing retreat working on my novel Wub Wub, but I'm also kind of taking some spare time to also read the Lock Tomb series. So it's been really nice to kind of have that balance between writing with the creative well and then refilling the creative well. And it's definitely been inspirational so far in my writing journey because there's certain like aspects to this series that like I'm taking like inspiration for for my book. But anyway, I finished Harrow the Ninth last night. The original just so many thoughts that I have about this like book, this series as a whole. But getting into it, God has a threesome. God has a threesome. And I was just like, what the actual 
like is going on. And that was basically my thought for most of this book because it's definitely like a longer introspective novel, I would say, because Harrow is definitely going through some kind of journey throughout this. And we're not really sure of what exactly is going on because some things that we are seeing are contradicting other things that we have read. Everything's just kind of like, what the actual heck? But everything then does start to make sense like near the end of the book. And I think it's definitely interesting the way that Tamsin Muir like wrote this because you're kind of alienating your readers, but then letting them in at the very last minute. And it can be polarizing to readers at points because you don't really know what you're going to think about that. But I, I pretty much enjoyed it because I basically view this series so far as a kind of like the stages of life in a necromantic sense. So with Gideon, we have like life and death. With Harrow, I would probably presume that this is going to be kind of like purgatory. You're kind of aimlessly wandering. Like there's the bit in Greek mythology where it's like there's a certain part of the underworld. I think it's like the Asphodel Meadows, but then you kind of have this weird like introspective relationship with God and kind of the things that like God tells Harrow throughout this book. We also find out God's name is John. Of all the names you could call yourself, you pick like John, like the whitest name possible. I mean, I guess that's kind of funny, but also John. John, like why would you not call yourself like Mercy Morn? Like that is such like a sexy name. And then Commander Wake Me Up Inside, brilliant actually stunning. So then I would say like this is purgatory, kind of that wondering, like waiting, figuring out kind of where you belong and who you are. And then we'll get to the next book, which I consider to be a rebirth or a reinvention in a way. I don't know exactly what I would say Electo is. Who knows? As like going in with Harrow, I think Harrow as a character is definitely explored much more throughout this novel. And like the way that we see two different versions of Harrow in this, it's really interesting to see Harrow go through certain things within this book. And especially with her relationship with God and also seeing the other lictors and Iante and Harrow's like friendship slash relationship grow throughout this novel as well. It was very interesting to see this kind of community evolve. And especially when we get to learn more about lictorhood and the various things that happen and the betrayals and the plot, it definitely came together in such a way that I was like, this is brilliant because you're basically seeing the slow decay of a system in place whilst they're going out killing planets. And with every planet that they kill, the decay of the relationships get worse. There's like a, a link there where it's like the more planets they kill, the worse the relationships become. It was definitely interesting to see that happen in real time whilst I was reading this book. And I was also listening to the audiobooks by Maura Quick, who narrates it. And Maura Quick does like such brilliant work narrating all of the audiobooks. She also gives Magnus and Abigail Penn Welsh accents. And honestly, that just makes me really happy because Abigail Penn is such like a, she's a bit of a MILF, not gonna lie, but she's also just amazing. And I really like love that for me. I feel like this is definitely like a really good second novel, which rarely ever happens, but I don't think personally it was as good as Gideon, in my opinion. I definitely think there were places where the pacing was very slow. Things could have been done a little bit faster in other places. However, I can see why Tamsin Maria felt the need to explore and like have some added like contextual world building because the world building was very strong in this one. We got a lot of added context to a lot of things. And I think it really helped flesh out the world as a whole and also bring in more of the sci-fi into it. And now I feel like going into Nona with the hamburger, a six legged dog, which I'm still like, what? I feel like that's gonna be like more of like a cyberpunky kind of feel. But yeah, overall, I think Harrow was just a brilliant continuation of the Lock Tomb series. And now getting into to Nona, I am just super excited to see like how things evolve because everything was fine in Harrow. And then I got to the epilogue and then I was like, bitch, what the fuck? What is going on? in the locked tomb. There was a lot. I think this will be quite like a refreshing book in a way, whilst also setting up the final book of Electo the Ninth, because I feel like this book is going to deliver a really cool narrative. And also actually, before I go, look at this nakedness. I think Nona has like my favorite nakedness. And then when Electo comes out, I hope Illumicrate does like a special edition of Electo to like match this. I have theories on what the color is gonna be of like the book cover, but I'm gonna hold that till the end so we can uh, theorize that later. But for now, I'm gonna get to reading this and I'll be back with my whole thoughts and feelings, wrap this whole vlog up and I'm just having so much fun with this series. And so yeah, I'll see you in a bit besties.
Okay, hello besties. Today I'm dressed in my Glossier hoodie because I need to do purple to finish off this video, you know, because we have finished Nona the Ninth by Tamsin Weir. And I have to say, this is probably my favorite book of the series so far. I went into it being clueless and not knowing what the heck was going on. I left feeling devastated. My emotions were destroyed. An airplane is flying above me right now. I literally just could not believe the emotional journey that I had been taking on through this entire series. And especially this book as well, because Nona as a character is so wonderful wonderful and so innocent but at the same time just so amazing and I really loved the character journey that Nona went on throughout this entire novel with her friends Hot Sauce and Honesty and Born in the Morning and Beautiful Ruby and I just think that Nona had such a spectacular story that I feel like I could read an entire series just based on Nona's adventures alone. I just loved the kind of backdrop of this novel as well with the cyberpunk feels that I thought were going to be present and we also got to see like really the an introspect into kind of the normal citizen and how they feel about the entire thing that's happening right now with the houses and the whole conflict because it's not often that we get to see what the regular civilian thinks the different family dynamics that people have the different social classes people have and the way they struggle to survive within the society that the houses have kind of set up and it really is interesting to see how the different children have adjusted to their environments but then also how they adjust their survival tactics in order to survive. And I feel like through Hot Sauce, through Born in the Morning, through Honesty, we can really see the way that each of these kids are forced to mature quite quickly in this world. They do try and have a semblance of a childhood, but it's also hard given the fact that they are really like basically given a death sentence from the moment that they're born. And I think this novel really sold itself well in terms of addressing the bigger conflict in this book, whilst also really making it matter to everyone who are powerful in this situation. There's just so much that this book offers and I definitely do think that this is probably going to go into one of my favourite books that I've read this year and I know this is probably the third book that I've read this year however it is that amazing. It is that good. There was just something about this book that I really resonated with with Nona as a protagonist with Camilla, Palamides and Pira. There was a fine family dynamic and I feel like it just really exemplified like itself. Camilla, Palamides and Pira just being these parents to Nona that they're, they're kind of going between like wanting like a quiet life with Nona. This book really just dug in deep into my emotions and really dug in deep to the emotional complexities of this series and really just brought everything to a grinding like climax. The climax in and of itself is so shocking that I literally had to take a minute after finishing this book and just sit in silence for about five minutes at the end of my writing retreat just being like what the fuck just happened? Nothing will ever be the same again and given the foreshadowing that we got in Harrow the ninth. There's going to be death and destruction in the next book and I'm not looking forward to it because we don't really know what's going to happen now and the only way we're going to know is by reading Electa the ninth which is out this October. But overall like Nona the ninth was just such a fantastic book. It really gives a great way of how to write like a low stakes slice of life novel whilst also addressing a bigger conflict that's happening everywhere else and it really weaves in the smaller conflicts with the bigger conflicts, the smaller scale to the bigger scale. It's beautiful. It's stunning. And I really, again, would love to see more Nona content, although there's also potential we might not. And there's just this one scene at the end of Nona where Nona's just basically talking about the hamburger shit. I was close to tears. I was close to tears. It's just sad. It's so, it's so hard. And Moira Quick, again, gives such a spectacular performance as the narrator for these audiobooks. It makes me feel even more invested in all of these characters and the voice she does for Nona is so amazing. Again, I just feel connected to this book in more ways than one. And when we get to Electo, which I'm theorizing, I feel like Electo is probably going to have like a golden or we're going to get more into the red territory as we draw to a close with the Lock Tomb series so far. Basically, everyone who pressured me into reading this series, thank you. Thank you so much because I had so much fun reading this series and I literally cannot wait to see what's going to happen next. There's just going to be a lot more wonder, there's going to be a lot more adventure, a lot more unseriousness, a lot more pop culture. I, I just need it. I need it now. And I'm also not prepared to read how this is going to end. Maybe Tamsin Mira will be like, actually, Electo isn't the end. I have a fifth book coming after Electo. Who knows? 
Maybe we'll get Paul the sixth. Thank you so much for joining me today on my adventures through the Locked Tomb series. I had an ungodly amount of fun with this. And again, thank you so much to Tails for sponsoring today's video. If you're like Nona, who feeds Noodles some delicious food and you want to give your dog delicious food as well, then you can use the link in my description to go view the delicious deal from Tails and give your dog something tasty to eat. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified whenever I upload next. I'll have all my social medias in the description down below for you so you can follow me on every Every single other platform. And yeah, I just feel the need to kind of reread this entire series already. However, I feel like I'm gonna spend some time now probably consuming some shorter fiction. I don't know. I don't know what my next read is gonna be yet. And so yeah, I guess until the next time. Bye besties.